Hi everyone, this is Vicky from Vivid Talks. Today I'm bringing on a very special guest, Anthony, aka Mr. Passabom, who is the creative director for League of Legends. He has done a lot of amazing motion graphics work, such as the login screen that a lot of gamers around the world enjoy. I'd love to share with you his story and his journey of how he worked at Riot Games for seven years. Welcome, welcome, Anthony, aka Mr. Passabom, to Vivid Talks. So happy to have you on today. Would you like to introduce yourself to those listeners who are not familiar with what you do? Oh yeah, sure. I mean, you really introduced me so I, I think we're done right I need to we're leave. done <laughs> thanks for listening <laughs> i'm a creative that works in the industry the video game industry i used to work at riot games as a creative director and right now i'm pursuing my own venture a little bit under wraps but i'm still in animation and, and storytelling that is cool so what would you say would be the highlight of your career to date of what you're doing right now I mean, look, anybody that works in art wants to see their art out in the wild and people enjoy it. I would say the highlight would be that my contribution in terms of art made its way into a video game into League of Legends. Right. And personally, I was such a fan of the game prior to joining Riot Games. When I got to actually go into the campus and eventually work there full time and then, you know, do what I did there. I remember like the moment where I had an interview and my interview was in like Teemo, the room. Because all of the meeting rooms there are named after the champions in League of Legends, right? So I'm here like giddy because I'm like, I'm is- in Timo. <laughs> office like what is right. it so the highlight would be that i got to contribute to such an amazing game something that i was in love with and that i was able to share my love to and then you can share your love with everyone else that also enjoy the game too right that's pretty yeah. sweet so what actually <laughs> got you to start into your art career video games <laughs> in high school when my friends were out going to parties and doing whatever i found my safe haven my fun place was on a computer playing games and joining like these different like chat rooms not too dissimilar to discord ended up joining a gaming clan at the time needed a new website and i was like you know what i can learn how to like do some art or do something on there and so i ended up making this like intro in this thing called flash adobe flash at the time just made this like website intro and i just fell in love with digital arts and i knew i wanted to get into some level of digital arts so that's what started me on my path i went to college and then eventually made my way out into la into the gaming industry. So you mentioned you went to college. So do you actually need a college degree to get into your art industry? It depends on the company, what they're hiring for. I used to hire people at Riot as part of the art department. No, you absolutely do not need a degree. Really what game companies are looking for in terms of when talking about art is can you do the job that they're looking to fill? If you have a portfolio and you didn't go to college, but your portfolio showcases that you could potentially do the role that's necessary, then you're a potential candidate. It doesn't matter you know, if you went to college or not. Now, that's not the case if you're like getting into like the legal team at the company. If you're getting into an aspect that's not necessarily creative, you may need some sort of degree. That's true because art's really subjective too, right? Even though so you have a degree, you may not have the skill set or the portfolio to demonstrate your competency. So it's really your work that really speaks for itself. Yeah, a degree really doesn't mean anything. If you can't execute on the art that's necessary for the game, what's the degree for? It could prove that you're capable at completing something, something that is difficult to do, but it doesn't mean that you're like the best candidate for the job. Perhaps you're like an illustration artist and you're really good at illustrating apples, but if you're doing splash screen for League of Legends and making characters, that doesn't exactly translate one to one. But if your portfolio showcases that and it's a style that's very similar, if not the same, or even better than what's being done on the League of Legends splash art, then now we're talking. So what are companies actually looking for when you're trying to apply for a job then? That could be anything. It really depends on the company and what they're trying to do. My advice to anyone that's trying to get into a video game company is look at the roles that they put up on their website. Which of those roles are you interested in? And then Mm -hmm. build your portfolio, make artwork that represents that role. So for instance, again, if you're an illustration artist, make splash art. Do not make sketches. 3D doesn't matter. Like nothing else matters. It's can you do that particular job? Use things, use tools to your advantage. Use sketch if you need that for like preparing to create your artwork and showcase that in your portfolio. But oftentimes what I came across when I was hiring at Riot is that a lot of starting out artists, they make artwork and it could be very beautiful, but it's not applicable. It doesn't apply oh, yeah, yeah. to what that role is. And I've been reached out to you about this before. It's like, hey, look at my art. Do you think it's good? Can I get a job? It doesn't work that way. Instead, make work for the job that you're trying to do. 
showcase that you can do it. And again, if you could even do it better, if you could have your own take on like what splash art could be, and perhaps that's what Riot is looking for, boom. It's hard to say no to an interview when your portfolio showcases that kind of work. That's so true. I guess it's really interesting because like society nowadays, you kind of showcase all your skills, but you don't focus on the specific skill the company's looking for. That broad stroke is fine. Like do that. But that's not how you get a job. Because a lot of times you'll hear like instructors or those in the industry say, get really good at this like one thing. Be really good at this one thing. It's not that. That one thing could not be what the company's looking for. If you want this particular job, cater your portfolio to that job. Make it filled with, if it's an animation, you know, I was hiring for motion graphics. If it's log and screen animation that you want to do at Riot Games, have a portfolio that showcases you could do log and screen animation. And you have plenty right. of examples of this. That makes sense. So then how did you become art director for Riot Games? Come on, tell us, spill the beans. <laughs> like I said, I fell in love with League of Legends prior to joining the company. I was working in advertising before that. My particular skill set is basically motion graphics meets web development. And so for Riot, their client at the time was built in the software that I used which is okay. again Flash, right. Adobe Flash. I had a skill set that could be applied at the company. But what's funny is that for motion graphics artists, video game companies don't really know what to do with you because oh. motion graphics, like you can't really use that in the game itself. So you usually get put onto promotional content or something that's not part of the game, but like outside of the game. Maybe, like I said, a commercial or some sort of cinematic or anything but the game itself. So when I applied at Riot, they didn't really know what to do or they didn't really respond to me until they saw that on the League of Legends forums, which used to be really popular at the time, mm -hmm. I threw up a versus screen. You know, the loading screen for yeah, every game yeah. it has a splash art. I created a new version of that where it had no border on the artwork and all of the characters were almost like versus style, almost like a fighting game versus like screen. Like a 2D screen and the two characters are together. The characters are next to each other, like, oh, I'm going to get you. Like, yeah. <laughs> so it was like five characters on this side, five characters on this right. side, all cut out in an environment like versus. That got a lot of attraction on the forums. Mm -hmm. At Riot, they kind of connected the dots that I was the person that did this. Woo! So I got an interview and I got hired as a temp employee. Oh, okay. I would be there for three months, basically. But because I created this thing that was trying to improve this game, and for me, I just made it out of like pure love. I was like, community, look at this. <laughs> you know, our loading screens could look like this. Why don't we have this? <laughs> But that showcased to Riot that I wasn't just there to be an artist. I was someone who was looking to improve the game in a way that they didn't expect. And that caught their eye and that got me my first interview and that got me my first temp job at Riot. Oh, wow. I got in the door as a Flash UI animator. And a hardcore fan. <laughs> and a hardcore fan. They just knew that I could add value in some way. I was starting to animate like every time that you kill the creep, you get experience. And so there's this little bar on the UI that would like fill up as you get experience. And so I animated that. That's what I did as my first job at Riot. But what solidified my place and what brought me success at Riot Games is when I made my first login screen, pitched it to the art director at the time and said, hey, I could do this. I can make these animated screens that appear on the front of the game. Immediately, he saw value in that, offered me a job, asked me what I wanted to do at the company. and they didn't have a department called motion graphics. So oh, okay. I was like, I want to lead a motion graphics department in the art department, just like you would find an illustration artist on the art department, mm -hmm. just like you would find an animator. I wanted a motion graphics department that I would lead. What we would do is make login screens. That would be our job. Got the okay. And so that was the start of my journey of building a motion graphics team in the art <laughs> department and the start of login screens. So login screens were not a thing prior to that. So that was a really fun, exciting experience to get into this new thing called login screen and animating that and you know making that a big thing as it is today after doing login screens for a long time i think by the point that i'm talking about we did like 50 login screens the team and i i got offered an opportunity to tell long form stories i guess cinematics or league and so wow. that's when I ended up directing any origins, the story about any that started my like path getting into storytelling, which eventually helped my title up to creative director. Cause now I went from a temp employee making UI animations from the board, to, yeah. Community to board. a motion graphics artist to a motion graphics lead to storytelling. And that's a pretty big range in terms of content. So I eventually became a creative director directing a storytelling piece for any origins. Wow, you basically created so much history in the League of Legends game. It's like you helped it evolve to what it is today. That is so cool. <laughs> I mean, I want to go that far. 
I think when so. When I started at the company, the company was like 400 people. I was like employee 400. And when I left, it was like probably like 3,000, 3,500 okay. employees. I definitely got to see the transformation of when the uh, game was getting popular to now we have 100 million players and then to the point where we're starting to put out like storytelling content. And then for Annie Origins, that was the final hurrah, my last project at Riot. Definitely a close to heart project Aww. for sure. I'm glad you ended off with a bang then. So then you said that you transitioned out of Riot Games. So what are you doing now? Are you working on certain projects or what has your career path taken you to do now? Riot is a big company. I was telling you it grew quite a bit. There's a lot of ideas of what the company should be, what storytelling should be, how Riot should handle the characters. What should we do with them? Should we like look into other games? Now you're seeing there's other games coming out for Riot. Yeah. Um, you know, should we look at like animated series? And that's where Arcane is, right? There are a lot of ideas of how we could leverage our characters to really breathe breath into the universe of League of Legends. And so for me, I was at kind of like a crossroads where I could continue to do this, continue that path, or if I'm I'm going to start over and tell stories why don't i do that myself i decided to go down that path i was at riot for seven years wow. it was a good amount of time to be there still consider riot a home of mine i still talk to the ceo every so often brandon he was essentially my single stakeholder the one person that i would have to show the oh. any origins to because this is you know character that he's very close to since it's one mm -hmm. of the first characters in league i decided to go off on my own path and look at what it would take to tell stories in a different way and so that's what i'm doing today r d of other avenues of telling stories wow i'm so happy for you. you've gained like almost like a decade of experience and now you're doing your own thing now creating your own storytelling in your work can you tell us a little bit about what this project is or is still kind of secretive? <laughs> like I can't get into too much detail. I'm definitely looking into digital influencing and how that's become such a monster today. Mm -hmm. When I was first looking into it, you and I talked about it. I was exploring what that would look like to tell stories through digital influencers. A digital influencer has a natural story about them, right? Like they have their mm -hmm. own personal journey. And if you're right. someone who follows this individual, you go with them on that journey. I think it's amazing. It's super genuine. It's a fantastic experience. And I think there's a way to tell stories in that medium and it doesn't need to be so distant as we see in movies and television today. When I mean distant is that a digital influencer could, as part of their story, something could happen to them that happens to everyone. I live in LA and there could be an earthquake today the digital influencer could jump on and react to the fact that there was an earthquake and it actually affect her story as it moves forward. That's a level of immersion in terms of storytelling that we haven't seen yet. It's kind of amazing potential there. We haven't seen really good examples of tapping into that to the fullest extent. We're seeing a lot of examples now. Oh my gosh. It's like yeah. an ocean, an ocean <laughs> like the of the VTubers digital... and everything, right? Kind of reminds me of, you know, in video games, it used to be very linear path of storytelling, but then they had to give you some choices, but now you have like open worlds and you have so many different choices that have multiple different ending outcomes it's kind of like that like having the environment or people's actions change their story. That's, again, another level of storytelling we haven't seen yet. Also, we're seeing a decline in watching movies. A three-hour experience isn't the same anymore as it was, let's say, 10 years ago. And I think that that's because we want to experience content really quickly. You know, that's why I think a lot of people that stream for a living, like, they've really hit a gold mine because it's like every single day, here's new content. Whoever's following this individual, they like because they have resonance with this person or they identify by this person. I like, you know, X person because I trust what they're saying is something that I care about and they actually give me advice when I don't have it. There's a crazy direction in how we consume content and I think that there's a way to leverage that with storytelling. I'm so excited to see how your project evolves because definitely there's a whole frontier you can definitely tap into and explore. I'm excited for it. <laughs> like the last thing I'll say about this is that I feel that there's definitely a lot of content out there right now. And I think there's some that are really successful what they do, but I don't feel that we've seen true character change in an influencer. Something happens to them, real or not, that changes their path forever. What we're seeing instead is more like a constant state of a digital character, meaning you won't see them ever like get this new job or have a friend, you know, pass away and go through that issue or have an eternal struggle that they have to work through. That's what you watch in a movie. That's what you watch in television. That's why we're so glued to it when we watch it. We as humans like to see this character change so that we also learn from it and also be entertained while in the process. We have not seen that with digital influencing. My goal is to tackle that. That's beautiful. <laughs>
<laughs> that's a huge project to tackle. Storytelling is not easy. You got to just do it the right way that actually hits and resonates with people, right? Definitely that's a huge Very, feat. very difficult. Yes. Yeah. I wanted to ask you one last question. Mm -hmm. Who is your favorite League character? <laughs> it's very important. <laughs> Look, what got me into League of Legends and made me fall in love with the game and stay with it for so long, it was Fiddlesticks. Fiddlesticks yeah. was like my jam. Every time I tell someone that like Fiddlesticks was my jam, they look at me like, really? Like, why Fiddlesticks? And why? I don't know. There's like some amazing feeling of like preparation to like destroy everyone in your crow storm. The fact that you can wait in a bush, no one knows you're there, and you just <laughs> jump in, you know, and win the game because you just got a quadra kill or hit to kill, and then all of a sudden you just like rush the base. Like, I don't know. There's something about that that I fell in love with. And that's actually what really got me into League was Fiddlesticks. He is my boy, Fiddlesticks. <laughs> but I will say that I have a special place for Annie. I didn't play Annie prior to making the short for her. I forced myself to like designate all game time to playing Annie so that I could better understand what kind of story I should tell mm -hmm. for the character. And over time, like she became my main, like 100%. Annie support, Annie mid, like let's do it. Like I'll make it work. She ended up being my favorite character in the end. Call me bias. But yeah, <laughs> but I have a slew of like mains. Like Vayne was like a really big one. Loved her as a ADC. I got into Syndra for a long time. Malphite was a champion I played a lot. Well, mine is Akali. Oh, <laughs> That's course. why I'm having this Akali chair here. I really love well, your you... new chair designs. Oh my god, the back of it is <laughs> so cool. It's that like embroidered awesome. and so nice. <laughs> so I'm not yeah. like doing a promotional thing here, but I just want to <laughs> show off my chairs. <laughs> well, you're doing a good job anyways. <laughs> Let me ask you something. What did you think of her redesign? I didn't mind it. It's something fresh, you know? And I think because I'm a cosplayer, it's quite biased. Whenever there is a redesign of a character, instead of thinking, do I like it? It's more like, how do I make it in real life? I just, like, gears start churning. It's like, how do I, you know, make this hair kind of poke up in the air? Do I use, like, crazy glue? Do I put wires inside? Or, you know, things like that, right? Instead of, like, do I actually like how she looks? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm a little biased. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time, Anthony. I really appreciated you sharing your story. Really insightful. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how your project turns out when you do a little bit more research on it, too. So Great. thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Cheers. Bye. Thanks.